Hello dear friends, welcome to Shiksha Mantra once again. And today in Shiksha Mantra, we are going to find out the Rapunzel. Yes dear friends, the Rapunzel of English grammar would be our search for today. Is it uh, very typical to listen to that we have a Rapunzel in English grammar? No dear friends, it's very simple. Once you have learned properly what I'm saying, you'd understand there's a Rapunzel in English grammar as well and why it is so very important that we have to learn about her. So let's begin our discussion today and find out the Rapunzel of English grammar. Yes, dear friends, when we talk of Rapunzel, who is a Rapunzel and uh, what was her story, you know everything. So I'm not going to tell you the story, but only I'm going to tell you something about her. It was her golden locks, which the witch as well as her suitor, the prince used to climb to her castle. She was so very beautiful. She was so very efficient in everything. She was such a charming girl. Yet, she had to live a secluded life in imprisonment. So in English grammar also, there's a castle. And if you want to climb that castle, you have to find out Rapunzel because that castle also doesn't have any staircase yes dear friends and with the help of the golden locks of rapunzel of english grammar you have to climb that castle now are you really interested do you really want to know who is uh, that rapunzel and what is the castle i'm talking of to know this obviously here you have to sit to the board there for I'm going to write down something on it and this would be very very interesting yes dear friends just consider it's such a thing which is essential to know the verbs it's such a thing which is also essential to know the voice it is such a thing which is also essential to know about the phrases, about parts of speech, about the clauses of English grammar. So whatever those very very important parts of English grammar whenever you are going to learn you have to know the Rapunzel of English grammar. Probably you are now quite close to what I am saying. You may had already found out. But before we start our search for the Rapunzel, let me tell you one thing. What is the basic construction of an ideal English sentence? It's very simple. You will say, sir, it's S V O. Here S stands for what? You know, S stands for subject v stands for verb and o stand for what o stands for object but when we discuss a sentence and obviously when we discuss about english grammar we discuss so many things about the subject about the verb most of the time our discussion remains verb centric and from that verb Obviously, subject also gets some focus because their subject-verb combination. The conjugation of a verb is dependent on the form of the subject. That's why we discuss so frequently regarding the subject and the verb. But the object, what is this? Most of the time, we don't discuss so many things about objects. We don't keep objects in focus. Yes, dear friends, they are those objects are the Rapunzel of English grammar. Now, why I'm calling them Rapunzel? Whenever 
you focus on object you would learn about the verbs for without learning about the objects without finding out the objects you can't complete your discussion of the verb you want to know whether the verb is transitive or intransitive if you don't have a proper knowledge of the object and also without finding out the proper object it's very difficult to do something in voice changes very frequently i have found my students they make mistakes in voice changes because they fail to find out the proper object of the sentence yes dear friends and uh, the objects are also very much related to phrases and clauses why obviously i am going to discuss about this look when it comes to object you have some options who can be the objects of a sentence obviously a noun can be the object of a sentence when i say noun it means a pronoun can also be the object of a sentence so nouns and pronouns they can be the object of a sentence and again obviously a noun phrase can be the object of a sentence and the same way noun clause can be the object of a sentence so whenever you are going to learn parts of speech and their positions the positions of noun and pronouns where they occur and also the details about personal pronouns the cases why i have said object as the rapunzel of english grammar cases is such a chapter which is so very important cases of nouns and pronouns it's so so very important in, in english grammar but unfortunately it is very much neglected as well so if you really want to learn english grammar you have to grab that rapunzel object yes dear friends if you want to learn the details of cases i have a discussion on it i would put the link in the i button above from where you may check it you have to learn it it's very important so for your learning of nouns and pronouns that is parts of speech object is essential on the other hand when you learn phrases noun phrases are so very important for your discussion and there without your knowledge of object your learning of noun phrases will remain incomplete and so is the cause for clauses as well as you know phrase and clause they are very much very much uh, close to each other so this is why we have considered object as the rapunzel of english grammar yes dear friends so i have decided that i would have a little discussion about the objects in english grammar but there's a but but before we start our actual discussion here we have so far learned why we are calling object as the rapunzel of english grammar now we will start our discussion how to find out the objects and what are the basic types of objects actually objects are of very different kinds and we aren't going after all those kinds of objects but this is only a uh, beginning of our discussion and here would we'll learn the basic kinds of objects only the basic kinds of objects so there are three basic kinds of objects but before we learn them let's make a magic and wipe our board so the board has been wiped up now after wiping out the board let's find out the different kinds of objects that we have to learn here so here we are going to learn of the objects and let me write it down a bit bold so that you remember it well we are going to learn about objects so the first thing or the basic thing that we have already said that the objects are of three types the first is direct object the second is indirect object and the third is 
object of a proposition so this is propositional object so these are the three different types of objects but before we start the discussion of the types of objects why shan't we say what is an object what an object is if you say i write i write just when we say i write what you get write this is the verb let me change the color this is the verb write and who is performing the action i the subject is performing the action but there is none to receive this action yes dear friends so write this verb is an intransitive verb because there is no one to accept to receive this action and when a receiver is added here suppose i have added i write a letter now there we get a receiver a receiver for this action and this receiver is called this receiver is called what this is called the object of a sentence and here we get s v o an ideal sentence and now after having this object the verb right it becomes transitive yes dear friends so that's how an object can change the status of a verb a verb can be transitive or intransitive the same verb and it depends on the rapunzel yes dear friends rapunzel actually detects whether she would put her hair her golden locks down to help the witch or the prince to climb up and if she decides i won't they can't so when there's rapunzel the verb becomes transitive and if there's no rapunzel the verb will remain intransitive so this is how we find out the object of a sentence now the question arises what's about the direct object indirect object and propositional objects so what is direct objects sometimes we ask the verb directly with what and we get an answer how i write what a letter i write what a letter so when you ask the verb with what and you get the answer this is the direct object now what is indirect object indirect object answers us to what for to or for what or whom and also it's not all about what there you have whom to find out the answer of the object now to or for what or whom how it is for this obviously we have to actually get another sentence here so let's change the color and write a sentence if we uh, write a sentence like this uh, ritu sent me a mail ritu sent me a mail if we consider this sentence here the mail is sent by whom by ritu so this is the subject and this is the verb now ritu sent what obviously a mail so this is the direct object mail to whom me so this is the indirect object probably you have found out what i have said when you ask the verb with to whom or for whom to what or for what you get indirect object and when you ask the verb with what or whom 
the answer you get is the direct object and at the same time a single sentence can consider both direct object and indirect object yes dear friends you have to consider whether these two objects present in a single sentence whether this is a sentence with double objects and you know this is very important very frequently we use this form normally what we feel normally we feel we have to use an object in a sentence because we know the structure there it is s v o but there can be d o and i o i o and t o that means uh, direct object and indirect object together in a sentence and we call them sentences with double objects yes dear friends and then comes the propositional objects how it is so if we write ritu lives look the sentence remains incomplete so here we are extending it in a village that's why we have considered this as the rapunzel it's a it's a very very important thing to learn dear friends just follow it lives this verb is intransitive this verb doesn't have an object but when we put a preposition after it ritu lives in lives in what a village and we get this object but here you have to understand that this object is not the object of the verb as we have in direct object or in indirect objects but this object belongs to the proposition so we call it object of a proposition or propositional objects yes dear friends this is what we call the basic of the objects but before we stop our discussion there are some other basics those terms are also related to this object learning so what are they here for the first sentence i write a letter i write a letter what you got here you got a single object and the single object makes the verb what makes the verb transitive so this is mono transitive but here we get two objects and two objects together makes the verb transitive so here we get di transitive just just follow what i'm saying i'm adding another very very important term with it mono transitive and di transitive the objects they are also of uh, different uh, very very much uh, different terms these are mono transitive as we have a single object to make it transitive and there's double objects so it's dry transitive and there's also a term which we call complex transitive do you want to have an example of a complex transitive are you really write it down in the comment section and obviously this class is very much useful for you don't forget to hit the like button hard there's the subscription so you can subscribe it with notification and that's up to you but let us show you what is complex transitive objects but before we discuss complex transitive the board look at the board there's uh, actually no space to write it down so let me wipe it out again and only after wiping it we will show you the example of a complex transitive so wipe out complex transitive yes first right let me write the term the term itself is is very 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 much interesting complex transitive complex 
transitive yes dear friends this complex transitive uh, if I write down a sentence like this I heard him shouting I heard him shouting I caught him stealing so here also we have the verb and it has an object him but if I say I heard him I heard him as there is an object the verb is obviously transitive there is nothing in it it's transitive but as you consider I heard him I heard him what there remains something which is not quite clear to you so you need some more information about him and shouting this is that extra information that makes him complete and only then together they complete the transitiveness of the verb and the verb becomes complex transitive yes dear friends it's also a very very important thing that we will discuss about uh, it later in our detailed discussion regarding the objects there we will discuss about complex transitive ditransitive and monotransitive so let's wait for this discussion we are returning very soon with the detailed description of the rapunzel of english grammar until then Bye-bye. Happy learning.